Hello there and welcome to another video here on my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Anais and I make videos related to Kubernetes and the cloud native ecosystem. Now this video is all about how GitOps, GitOps best practices can help you to enhance the security posture of your cloud native workloads, of your cloud native applications. Now in this video, I will showcase the different main parts on how GitOps can enhance your cloud native security. However, if you're curious on more background information and the entire complete talk, the link to the recorded video of this talk is below in the description of this video. So if you're curious about the entire talk, do check out the full video. It's also linked up there. If you're following GitOps best practices, the main principle is that most of your resources, if not all, should be defined, should be possible to define within Git, meaning they should be version controlled. They should be defined in code or similar, and it makes it possible to then version control them and also store them in some platforms such as GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, or similar. Now that makes it possible to then view changes over time to these resources and gain a common understanding of what is supposed to run where. How are those resources supposed to run? How are they supposed to interact with other resources? How are they supposed to interact with your infrastructure? Ideally, also your infrastructure resources should be defined within Git, not just your workloads. Now that's kind of the, the main idea behind GitOps. And across our software supply chain, we have several different components that ultimately that are used in one way or another as part of our build process, part of us developing, uh, building, deploying our workloads, our infrastructure. So well, that is one benefit of GitOps. The benefit for cloud native security, for the security posture of your services is that if you are different components within your software supply chain, if the different components that you're using, that you're deploying can be observed, they can also be scanned. If they're in Git, what's in Git can be scanned with your security scanner. And the more that you can scan with your security scanner, the higher the scan coverage of the different resources across your software supply chain. So that is a good thing. You want to increase scan coverage. Now, one way that you would decrease, that you could decrease scan coverage of your resources is by using platforms that allow you to uh, do click ops, define resources through a UI. In that case, if you define resources through a UI, often it's the case that you can't actually know how they are deployed with the different policies they are deployed in your infrastructure and similar. And that makes it more difficult to identify security issues such as misconfigurations within your infrastructure, the way that resources are defined and run. So using ClickOps, using platforms that define, that allow you to define your resources, your infrastructure through a UI, often decrease scan coverage of your resources. Now, this is one component that I talk about with in this talk, GitOps, the magic key to cloud native security. I mentioned several other parts that contribute um, to higher security of your workloads, of your cloud native infrastructure that GitOps can help you with. Now for this presentation, I also put together a demonstration, a little demo. It's in the cloud native security GitHub organization. And within there, you can find a repository called GitOps, the magic key for this exact presentation. Now here you will find different resources. The first thing is that you can find here an Argo CD directory. And within there we have Argo CD application resources. So another neat thing about GitOps is that you can not only define what is supposed to run, but how it's supposed to be deployed. And that's what you define, for example, through the GitOps, the Argo CD, let's open this, it's a bit slow, the Argo CD um, application. So this is wrong. This is supposed to be application. Um, <laughs> applica it's an application resource. And the application resource defines basically what is supposed to be deployed, where it is supposed to be deployed. That's here where it's supposed to be deployed. So what is the source? Where is the destination? And then how it's supposed to be deployed and synced is the sync policy. 
And that's all defined within the Argo CD application resource. And that's part of the Argo CD API. And that makes it super easy um, to get additional visibility into um, your processes, into the way you deploy resources, the way they are upgraded, the way they are deleted, things that you might um, have policies for within your organization, but you might not yet define within code. And that brings higher visibility into your processes and can help you to improve your your standards, your workflows. So that's within the Argo CD directory. We have here different um, two different application files. And here's the Trivi operator deployment, which is another Argo CD application. If it opens, you get a coffee while this is loading. See, this is supposed to be an application kind. Also before it's supposed to be an application kind. We define the project that this is application is part of. Um, the source, what is supposed to be installed, where is it supposed to be installed, and then the sync policy is how it's supposed to be installed, updated, deleted, and similar. And that's all defined within your Argo CD application. So that high observability brings higher control to your teams on how, how processes are actually executed to make deployments happen. Now, I have here the same repository. Let's let's move these, make it a bit bigger. And here we have again the resources. So this is supposed to be an application resource. And because you define things in code, you can define policies for it. So basically, you can define policies on how the sync policy is supposed to happen or uh, the kind of uh, sources that you are allowed to use people in your in your organization are allowed to use. You can define within policies. Now, Trivi is an open source cloud native security scanner, and it allows you to find additional policies, for example, for custom resources within Kubernetes through Rego policies. So this is a Rego policy. This is an example of a Rego policy. You have here some metadata that is needed to define the policy. So for example, the input schema, then here custom information such as the ID, that we are defining the vulnerability ID, the severity of that vulnerability if it's taking place. And here's ultimately the policy. Now within the policy, we are saying that the application resource has to have as a name, it should be kind application. Anything else is not accepted. And we could also say here that uh, you're not allowed to use prune in your sync policy. So here it's you, you were maybe not allowed to say prune equals true. You have to say it has to be false. Things like that you can define within your Rego policy. So when people define new application resources for your Argo CD deployments, for your application workloads deployments, you can verify that it's actually complying with the policies that you have defined within your team. And that gives you also higher security. And that also enhances overall the security posture of our workloads, of our applications. It just whatever gives you higher control, higher visibility is good from a security point of view. And then, so once we have that, we have Trivi installed, Trivi version. So here it's version 0 0.41. And then I can go ahead and I can run a Trivi misconfiguration scan on these resources. Now, without the regular policy, Trivi won't understand what these resources are. It won't be able to see whether there are any misconfigurations because it doesn't understand, like it only under knows about, or any security scanner really only knows about the default objects within the Kubernetes API. But this is a custom resource definition that expands upon the Kubernetes API. And so to check that this is not misconfigured, we need to define a RAGO policy for it, such as this one. Now, I'm also passing in here a JSON schema that defines how this uh, application is supposed to look like. So how the application resource, what kind of objects are supposed to be within. So for example, here within the metadata, we're supposed to have a namespace, we're supposed to have a name. And that's defined within a JSON policy that these fields have to be present. Now I can pass that with all together into a Trivi misconfiguration scan. And that's done as Trivi config. Let me put that over here. So we have here Trivi config, then the policy that we want to pass in. And then the namespace is something that has to be defined as part of doing regular scans. 
I think. <laughs> um, and then the resource that we want to scan, in our case, the application deployment. So we're passing in here our entire policies directory. The policies directory has both our JSON schema as well as the Rego um, policy that we want to check that it's actually, this is actually defined as an application deployment, right? So we can perform the scan with Trivi Config. This is a misconfiguration scan. Trivi config can also scan any of your Terraform, Docker file, um, what else? Kubernetes, Helm charts, uh, Helm charts without rendering. It can also scan, you can scan your AWS services. So if you're using ClickOps and AWS, you can check that those are configured correctly. Um, so we have here that file, that configuration file for our Argo CD application scan. Now it didn't detect anything that's wrong. Now, if we change this now, the application back to tests, which is wrong, right? The Argo CD wouldn't understand what a kind test is. And we scan, we perform the same scan again. Then it's telling us here's a high security issue and found Argo CD application for the website, but the kind is not named correctly. Like this is the name, the website, but the kind is not named correctly. It's named test, but it should be application. And that's, that's a misconfiguration. That's something we want to fix. So similarly, you could define other policies within Rago that are supposed to hold true within your application deployment for Argo CD. Now, once this is defined correctly, let's pull it back to application, you could apply this to your Kubernetes cluster where Argo CD is running within. As always, I really hope this video was useful. If it was, I would highly appreciate if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Also do let me know what kind of tutorials you would like to see in future videos. As always, the links and resources used are below in the description. Do check them out, specifically the link to the full presentation from Argocon called GitOps, the magic key to cloud native security. I hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos. Have an amazing day, week or evening. Bye-bye.